seems no one is safe from this growing plague on YouTube. As someone who isn't monetizing yet, this becomes discouraging when something you worked hard on gets hit with these claims from big companies. This almost makes me want to not become a partner at this time. For those not in the know, this is the plague of YouTube's copyright claiming system being used and abused to take down videos like mine, despite the fact that they're protected under fair use. I'm going to be repeating a lot of things that have already been said by other YouTubers, but when I see this happening to somebody who doesn't make their living through YouTube, it bears repeating these things. Let's start with the definition of the term fair use. Fair use is a legal doctrine which permits limited use of copyrighted material without acquiring permission from the rights holders. Examples of fair use products include parody, research, commentary, and what we do here on Please Rewind Napoleon, criticism. This is what other big name YouTube users do as well. The Nostalgia Critic, I Hate Everything, Your Movie Sucks, Anime America, The Mysterious Mr. Enter, and many more all rely on fair use for their reviews. But they all have one thing in common. They were all, at one point or another, attacked by the abuse of YouTube's copyright system. The way the system is currently set up is that companies can set an algorithm to detect how much of their material is used and a claim will automatically be filed on the video, or a company or representative can file a manual claim after seeing the video. Claims are viewed as the weaker punishment for misuse of copyrighted material. The more harsh punishment is the strike which is a legal request made by a company or a representative to have the infringing work removed from the site. If your account gets three of these, it becomes terminated. What's sad is that the algorithms and the filing process are so poorly set that they can be easily abused, and channels can have either their money removed, assuming that they're monetizing, or they can be terminated for all these false claims. I Hate Everything was a victim of these false claims in that Derek Savage, the creator of one movie that he reviewed, requested that the review be pulled, a strike be issued, and that I Hate Everything should issue an apology for the infringing use of his movie and all the negative comments made. When I Hate Everything refused to issue the apology and pointed out that Savage was acting as a bully with no knowledge of copyright laws, the attacks kept coming until Savage got to the channel finally fully taken down. This is a blatant abuse of a flawed system. Even more so when I hit everything couldn't even interact with YouTube directly to state his case. The Nostalgia Critic was also a victim in that some of his reviews were claimed by the production companies behind some of the movies he reviewed. With the claims made against his videos, the companies took all revenue funds that came from future viewings away from the critic and his crew. They did fight the claims, but in the end, the company still won because they got the money even if the claim turned out to be false. This is theft, pure and simple. In addition to these two notable cases, others have been hit with claims from rights holding companies. What these guys can do besides just taking money from these users is they can also block the videos from being viewed in other countries, and this includes new uploads. Anime America was hit by one of these random rights holding companies, and it not only killed any revenue they earned, but they couldn't have their videos shown in Italy. This forced them to start making all future uploads blocked from Italy to avoid any more claims. From reducing your audience to terminating your channel, companies can do whatever they want when they claim videos that are supposed to be protected under fair use. And if the user behind the fair use content wins, what penalties do the companies receive for making these false claims? None. That's right, there are no negative repercussions for companies making false claims. Meaning that even if they lose, they still win because your money is now theirs. Now I know what you're wondering, the point is all well and good, but what does any of this have to do with you? Glad you asked. While I may not be monetizing my videos at the time of this video, when I see that my videos, both old and new, are getting struck with claims of all kinds, it's discouraging me on both a creative and an emotional level. On the emotional level, it makes me want to not pursue any form of partnership with YouTube to monetize with Rewind Napoleon. And even if I still choose to take the risk, I still don't feel safe in uploading anything if I'm going to be in a constant fight with companies over my work. Not only that, but it puts me in fear of losing one or more videos to takedowns if I fail to win an appeal on any of the claims placed against me. And it doesn't help that when filing any appeals, 
you are given the length of a tweet to state your case. And on the creative level, I almost don't want to make any more reviews because someone is going to flag it as copyright infringement and not fair use that could be used to help promote a positively reviewed series or even get people curious about ones that I give a negative review. As much as the situation affects me, it can also affect you, the viewer. Many of these companies have made claims on non-monetized videos so that way they can make money. And this has happened to many of my videos. It's as if someone was managing a lemonade stand that gave away the drinks instead of charging for them. Then another person comes along and says that they owned the rights to your lemonade stand and they filled a gate with an entry fee in front of it. The fee might be small, but it's not what the manager intended for his product. So even if you and I are not directly losing money, someone is gaining money off of these lies. But Napoleon, you may be saying, YouTube is working on fixing these copyright claim issues as we speak. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. When there are channels that upload full episodes of TV shows, full albums from various recording artists, and full movies, and they aren't getting busted for obvious infringement or attempts at piracy, I don't have a lot of faith in these changes. If the criminal accounts are getting away with their actions and people who are exercising the true meaning of fair use are getting busted for non-criminal acts, well, as Twisted Sister saying, we're not gonna take it anymore. I would be playing a sample of the song right here in the background, but I don't want to press my luck. In all seriousness, we do need to rally together and tell YouTube that what's currently happening through their current system is not okay. Yes, piracy is an issue. Don't sacrifice someone's creativity involving fair use in the process. There should be an ability to speak directly to YouTube support to explain some of these issues to avoid cases like I Hate Everything's from happening again. YouTube can't just sweep the nagging question of where's the fair use under the rug like their automated search suggestions are telling us when you even try looking it up, even with the critics' video having over a million views since it was first uploaded. We must also show and remind them that by allowing these forms of abuse to their system to happen, they are allowing companies to perform illegal acts under fair use and the DMCA. These algorithms and flags may be set up to avoid their being sued by big companies like they were by Viacom. But if this keeps up, then the creators will be the ones filing suit against YouTube. I don't want it to come to this, but if it has to fall onto a class action suit, and it may be the only option left to get things fixed if the proposed changes still fail. I love YouTube, and I want to keep sharing reviews with you guys. But I don't want their broken system to deter me from creating new content for you, or from discouraging anyone who wants to pursue a career through YouTube, because all their favorite uploaders are being falsely attacked with these copyright claims. We need to rally together Tell YouTube that we need change that will serve as a double benefit in that it will not only allow creators less fear and more freedom, but will also help YouTube expand its viewership. But until that day comes, I, Napoleon John, and I have to ask the question, where's the fair use? Hey guys, Napoleon here. Uh, quick update to this video because apparently some of the stuff that I just posted is a bit outdated. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> anyway, um, so with regards to one element that I posted in this video, um, the whole thing about YouTube sweeping this whole where's the fair use thing under the rug, that does not seem to be a real thing anymore. In fact, um, I just recently started going through the search suggestions um, or going through the searches on YouTube to see if Where's the Fair Use will show up in the automated suggestions. Turns out now it does. So, yay, the message is getting out there. YouTube's actually getting to the point where they are wanting to talk about this whole thing. Now, in addition to these, there's also a little bit of an update I want to give you guys on some of the reviews that I had shown um, screenshots of where I had copyright claims on them. Um, I put up a dispute against Warner Brothers Entertainment's um, visual claim against SWAT Cats. That review actually got its claims, both of them, the original um, rejected dispute that I did years ago and the brand new claim, all of them got dropped within 24 hours of the time that I filed each of the counters. 
So yay on that one. Um, and All Dogs Christmas Carol. That one had the claim from Sony Music Entertainment for Andy Williams' It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year that was played during the end credits. That one, within a week of filing the dispute, Sony dropped it. So that one's done. Um, I also decided to file a dispute against Hasbro for the My Little Pony review. Hasbro was not so kind. Within a week of filing that dispute, they rejected it and reinstated their claim. Now I get to fight them, hoping that an appeal, better explaining fair use to them, will actually get me a win. Now, here's a little bit of a note for you guys. If this happens to fail, that means there will be a strike going up on the account. So what I'm planning on doing is, up until the time that the strike potentially wears out, assuming that it will, I will be posting my reviews on a Daily Motion account. I'll be posting a link to that in the future. And what will also happen is I'll have a trailer up for each review, and it will include that Daily Motion link, so that way you guys can be able to view the review, even if YouTube is not going to allow it, because thank you Hasbro and your copyright strike. So that's really all that I want to get out there for you guys. Um, hopefully everything goes well with the appeal. If not, like I said, Daily Motion is going to be a secondary upload, and you guys can check out the reviews a week before I attempt a YouTube upload, again, assuming that the strike wears out and I'll be able to post them again. If not, then, like I said, Daily Motion is going to be the main thing. I'm just going to be posting trailers to new uploads there. Um, so, thank you guys so much for your support. Um, thank you for sticking around for the update, as well as the Where's the Fair Use video right before this. And I hope that you guys are having a good day, and I'll see you in the next review. Later! Later!